Hey everybody, welcome back for another deep dive. Always a pleasure. Into the world of words. It is exciting stuff. We are going to jump right into some collocations today. Love it. Those awesome word pairings. Absolutely. That we see all the time that just sound so natural when we use them. I do. Like we're native speakers. Mm -hmm. um, so let's jump right in with our first word, incredible. Oh, a good one. Yeah, this one packs a punch, mm -hmm. right? Like you hear it all the time. You, you hear incredible all the time and it can make almost any word it's paired with just better. Oh, for sure. You yeah. know, if you're talking about a story, right. an incredible story isn't just a good story. It's like... It's a memorable one. Yeah, it's unforgettable. Yeah. It stays with you. You're hooked. Exactly. Um, And the same with like an incredible experience. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's it, etched in your memory. Totally. It's something that you'll never forget. <laughs> it, it's so interesting how it just... It does elevate it, right? And it elevates it, yeah. It's like, wow, this is this was incredible. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, we could talk about something like incredible speed. Oh, yeah. Like, like a cheetah. Yeah. Sprinting across the savannah. Right. Or like an incredible achievement. Right. Like landing on the moon. Yeah, exactly. An incredible beauty. Ooh. That makes you think of something that's just... It's awe-inspiring. Yeah, awe-inspiring. It's breathtaking. Yeah, you think of something that's just so captivating. Like the Northern Lights. Oh, yeah. Remember that time we saw the Northern Lights? Oh, that was... Unforgettable. Incredible beauty. I know, incredible. So beautiful. Um, okay, so let's move on to another collocation that's a little bit different. Um, make a bid. Okay. So this one has me thinking of like auctions or deals. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Well, you're right. It definitely suggests this idea of strategy and competition. Yeah. Make a bid. You're trying to get something. Right. You're making a deliberate action. Slowly. To acquire something. The calculated move. It is. Um. So, yeah, we see it in auctions all the time, right? People are making bids to outbid each other. Right. Or even in business. Oh, yeah. A company might make a bid. Yeah. To buy another company. Right. To acquire another company yeah. or win a contract. Exactly. Yeah. Big contract. Big money. Yeah. Um, so it, it is about putting yourself out there, right? Yeah. Taking a chance to get what you want. Mm. And like you said, there's that competition. There is. You know, will your bid be accepted? Will it be rejected? Right. Or right. will it be the winning bid? The winning bid. Yes. So exciting. That's the best feeling. It is. Um, okay. So let's move on to something a little bit stronger, shall we? Hard liquor. Okay, strong one. This one just makes me think of like potency and intensity. Yeah, for sure. Hard liquor carries a weight to it. It does. Both literally and figuratively. Yeah. Right? Like you think about just the process of distilling liquor. Oh, yeah, it's complex. Right. It is. It's intense. It's a transformation. Um, And then when we think about something like liquor laws. Yeah. Like those are serious. Right. right. Regulations. Yeah. Um, So it's interesting how hard liquor. Yeah. Just reflects more than just the drink itself. I think so. You know? You think about the history of it. Yeah. You think about the culture surrounding it. Right, exactly, and how it's changed over time. Mm -hmm. Like, what about liquor cabinet? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Right? Like, back in the day, it was a very specific piece of furniture. It was very, like... Fancy. You, yeah. You know, where you kept your expensive bottles. Yeah. But now... Now it's kind of a general term for, like, a home bar. Totally. Right? Right. Which tells us something about how society has changed. Yeah. How our relationship with alcohol has changed. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to something a little bit sparkly. Imitation jewelry. Ooh, fun. So this one, before we jump in, I uh, just want to say, like, imitation isn't always a bad thing. No, it's not. Right. right. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's great. Um. So what do you think about this one? Well, I think imitation jewelry is great because it lets people enjoy jewelry yeah. without having to spend a fortune. Right. It makes it accessible to everybody. It, yeah. And it's still beautiful. It is. It's still stylish. Right. And there's so much creativity. There is. You know, they're taking inspiration from these high-end designers yeah. and using all this cool technology to, to replicate to it. make it look like the real deal. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting to me about this one is the concept of imitation itself. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not just copying. It's not. It's understanding something so deeply right. that you can, like, recreate it. Yeah, like, think about an artist yeah. who is making a perfect imitation of really? a famous painting. Right, it's not the original. It's not, but it still captures the beauty of it. It does. It really does. Yeah. Um, okay, so from sparkly jewels to something a little bit different, um, shallow pool. Okay. So what pops into your mind when you hear that phrase? Well, I definitely picture a specific image. Me too. 
And it's very different from like a deep ocean right. or a bottomless lake. Oh, yeah. Totally different. A shallow pool is something you can grasp. Yeah. You know where it starts. Yeah. You know where it ends. Oh, really? You can wade in. You can splash around. Yeah. But you're not going to get lost in it. You're not going to drown. Right. Um, and that's interesting because shallow goes beyond just physical depth. Right. It does. We can talk about a shallow understanding like, of something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. someone who doesn't quite get it. They haven't gone deep enough. They haven't done the work. Exactly. Um, or we can even talk about someone who's shallow, like as a person. Oh, yeah. Right? Shallow person. A shallow mind. Yeah, someone who's only concerned with the surface. Superficial. Exactly. Right. Um, all right, so from shallow waters, let's move on to something a little bit more pleasant, shall we? Pleasant scent. Ooh. I like this one. Me too. <laughs> this one just makes me feel good. It does. Like, close your eyes and imagine a pleasant scent. Okay, I'm closing my eyes. Right. Are you thinking of like freshly baked bread? Or, I am. Yeah. Freshly baked bread. Or like flowers blooming. Flowers blooming. Okay. Lilacs. Lilacs. Oh, that's lovely. Or even like the salty air. Oh, yeah. Of the ocean. That's nice. Right. It's so relaxing. It is. Yeah. So what's interesting to me about this one is like how scent is so powerful. It is. It can evoke all these memories. It does. And emotions. Like a familiar scent can take you right back. Totally like. To your childhood. Like your grandmother's perfume. Oh, yeah. Or the smell of your childhood home. Or like a campfire. Oh, yeah. Campfire. Right. right. The smell of smoke. Yeah. And a lingering scent. Ooh, yeah. That can be. Mysterious. Mysterious, right? Yeah. Or even romantic. Ooh. You know, like a, a trace of perfume. Yeah. If someone walks by. Totally. Yeah. So it really is powerful. It is. It's amazing how our sense of smell is so connected. To our emotions. To our emotions. Yeah. Um, Okay. So from the pleasant to something a little bit more concerning. Right. Irregular heartbeat. Okay. Yeah. So this one kind of reminds us that sometimes our bodies... They send us signals. They do. They tell us, hey. Something's wrong. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this one really highlights the importance of rhythm and regularity. It does. Not just for our physical health. Why would it? But for our mental health, too. Absolutely. They're like, think about it. Okay. A steady heartbeat. That's a good sign. It is. That means your heart is working. Right. And a consistent routine. Oh, yeah. Can really help us feel more stable. It can. And grounded. Absolutely. Like compare irregular heartbeat to an irregular schedule. Oh, yeah. I mean, a little bit of spontaneity is fun. It is, but, but too much. Too much is stressful. Yeah, you need some predictability. You need to know what's coming next. Right. Um, and it's interesting how irregular can apply to so many different things. It can. Right? We talked about irregular heartbeats, irregular schedules. We did. What about like irregular patterns? Oh, yeah. In nature. Like in the weather? Yeah. Or... Irregular verbs. Oh, those are tricky. I know, right? Yeah. Or even like irregular behavior. Right. Like someone who's acting. Out of line. Yeah. Outside the norm. Right. So it's a word that really makes us pay attention. It does. Like, wait a minute. Something's different here. Something's not right. Something's not right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So speaking of staying on track, let's talk about the trusty magnetic compass. Ooh. A good one. Right. Like for centuries, this little device. It's helped us navigate. It has. Maybe. Explorers, adventurers, they've all relied on it. Yeah. To get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. um, and just like a compass provides direction in the physical world. Right. A moral compass. Ooh. Guides our ethical decisions. Yeah. Like our inner voice right, telling so, us what's right and wrong. Right. What we should do, what we shouldn't do. Thanks. Um, so whether it's a physical journey or a metaphorical one, right? having a compass is essential. I think so. Makes yeah. all the difference. It it really does. Um, okay, so let's go back to nature for a minute and talk about harvest crops. Okay. So imagine this. You're in a field. All right. Golden wheat swaying in the breeze. Oh, beautiful. Right? Or an orchard. Okay. Bursting with ripe fruit. Delicious. Ready to be picked. I love it. It's just abundance. It is. It yeah. makes you think of all the hard work that went into it. All the planting and the tending. Mm -hmm. um, and then harvest season. Oh, yeah. That's like the culmination of all that hard work. That is the reward. Right. You get to reap what you sow. Exactly. Um, and a bumper harvest. Oh, that's the best. I know, right? That's like. Abundant. Extra abundant. Extra but It's a time of plenty. Yeah, we got to celebrate time. bumper harvest. Big time. Yeah. All right. So let's heat things up a bit with our next collocation. Turn on the stove. 
Ooh, getting hungry. Me too. Like, can you hear that sizzle? Yeah. The pan heating up. Yeah. The aromas filling the air. It's making me hungry. Me too. Yeah. So this one really marks the beginning of something delicious. It does. Right? Oh. Whether it's a simple weeknight dinner yeah. or a fancy feast, mm -hmm. turn on the stove. We're cooking. We're cooking. Something good. Something good. Exactly. Um, and what's interesting to me about this one is how stoves have evolved over time. They have. Right? Like from the wood burning stove yeah. to the gas stove yeah. to the electric stove. So many different kinds. I know. And each one tells us something about like technology, cults. how we live our lives. Yeah. What's important to us. Exactly. Um, okay. So let's move on to the world of artistry with our next collocation, poetic expression. Oh, I like this one. Me too. So think about the power of words, okay. right? to evoke emotions, to paint pictures, to transport us to different places. The power of it is, yeah. so poetic expression is all about using language creatively mm -hmm. to move people. To make them feel something. To make them feel something, exactly. Yeah. Um, so whether it's through poetry, yeah. songwriting, right. even just everyday conversation, mm -hmm. poetic expression lets us communicate. On a deeper level. On a deeper level. Yeah. And remember when we talked about poetic language? I do. Like using imagery and metaphors and similes. Yeah. To create those vivid images. Exactly. Yeah. And poetic imagery. Yeah. Which is all about painting those pictures with words. Beautiful picture. Yeah. yeah. And poetic license. Ooh, yeah. Where you get to bend the rules a little bit. You do. Right? It's fun. It, it is all about creativity. It is. Um, so it's amazing how poetic expression can elevate language it can beyond just the everyday yeah it makes it special it does yeah um okay so from the sublime to the practical let's talk about a familiar site bundle of clothes so what do you see i see a laundry basket yeah. overflowing overflowing with clothes with clothes right yeah. or maybe a neatly folded stack yeah on a shelf waiting to be put away right yeah but remember bundle Right. can mean so much more. It can. Than just clothes. Yeah. We talked about a bundle of papers. We did. Right? On our desk. Cluttering up our desk. Yeah. What about bundle of energy? Oh, yeah. Right? Like a... Bouncing off the walls. Bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Or a bundle deal. Ooh, yeah. Where you get like a bunch of stuff together. Yeah. For one price. For one price. Yeah. So it's about yeah, grouping things together. It is. Yeah. It's convenient. Yeah. It's practical. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Okay, so from soft, pliable bundles to something a little more rigid, let's talk about rigid structure. All right. What comes to mind? Well, I'm picturing a skyscraper. Okay. With a steel frame. Oh, yeah. Strong. What? Strong. Unbending. Unbending, oh. yeah. Or a bridge. Built to withstand tons of pressure. Yeah, they can't move. It can't. It's got to stay put. Yeah, rigid structure means no flexibility. Right. It's firm. Yeah. And that can be good or bad. It can't. It depends. Yeah. Right. Like, think about a rigid system. Okay. In an organization. Right. Could be good for efficiency. It could. Right. Everybody knows what to do. Right. But it could also stifle creativity. <laughs> Right. No room for new ideas. Exactly. Or rigid discipline. Ooh, yeah. Like think about parenting. Right. You need some discipline. You do. But too much. Too much is no fun. No, it's not. Kids need to be kids. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all about balance. Like so. Finding that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, okay, so for our last collocation in this segment, let's get heartfelt, shall we? Terribly sorry. So these two little words. Like a pack a punch. They do. Yeah. They convey so much regret and remorse. They do. They're more than just a simple sorry. Right. It's like you really messed up. And you know it. Yeah. And you feel awful. You're taking responsibility. You are. Yeah. Um, and remember, terribly is such a great intensifier. It is. Right. We can use it for so many different things. Yeah. Something can be terribly difficult. Right. Yeah. Terribly important. Yeah. Even terribly exciting. Yeah. It just emphasizes how you feel. It does. Yeah. It's like, wow. Wow. This is right. really important or this is really exciting or this is really difficult. Yeah. Um, so it's a great word to have in your vocabulary. It is. Right. And that's it for this first segment of our deep dive on collocations. That was fun. It was we got more coming up for you, though, so stay tuned. Can't wait. All right. Welcome back to our deep dive into collocations. So glad to have you back. Let's keep exploring. Absolutely. We've got more awesome word pairings to uncover. We do. So let's jump right in with main theme. Okay. So this one 
you know, we hear it a lot when we're talking about stories or movies. Yeah, or even like big ideas. Yeah. Complex ideas. Like what's the main theme? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. What's the message the author or the director is trying to get across? Yeah, or even like a historical event. Oh, yeah. What's the main theme of this event? Right. What are we supposed to learn from this? Exactly. Um, so it's at the heart of the matter. Yeah, the essence. The essence. Your big idea. Yeah, and sometimes there can be multiple themes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right, like interwoven. Yeah, like a recurring theme. Oh, yeah. That keeps popping up. Right, like it's important. Yeah, it's emphasized. We need to pay attention. Exactly. Or an underlying theme. Ooh. That's a little bit more subtle. Yeah. You've got to dig a little deeper. Like it's hidden. Yeah. But it's there. It's there. Um, Or even like a common theme. Oh, yeah. That connects different works right different stories different movies right or even like different events yeah showing us like these shared human experiences right like we're all connected in yeah. some way um so whether we're analyzing literature or watching a movie yeah or just living our lives right trying to make sense of the world mm -hmm. identifying that main theme it helps us understand. It does. The bigger picture. The bigger picture, exactly. Okay. So from deep meaning okay. to something a little bit more visual. Right. Let's talk about beautiful scenery. Ooh. I like this one. Me too. Yeah. It just makes me feel good. It does. So close your eyes. Okay. What do you see? I see mountains. Okay. Snow-capped mountains. Ooh. A crystal clear lake. Beautiful. Reflecting the sky. Oh, stunning. Yeah. It's breathtaking. It really is. Yeah. Um. And it doesn't have to be like this grand landscape. No, it doesn't. Or what about natural scenery? Oh, yeah. Like just going for a walk in the woods. Like a babbling brook. Oh, yeah. The sunlight filtering through the trees. I love that. Yeah. The like dappled light. Yeah. Um, or a tiny wildflower Ooh. growing by the path. So pretty. Oh, yeah. Um, And then there's spectacular scenery. Oh, yeah. Like this is next yeah, level. This is like, wow. This is like. You're speechless. Yeah, you're just in awe. The Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. The Northern Lights. Amazing. I know, right? Or a giant waterfall. Ooh, yeah. Like cascading down. Powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Nature is amazing. It is. Right. It is so beautiful. Um, okay, so let's move on to a collocation that's a little bit more structured, poetic form. Oh. So when we think of poetry, right. we often think of like rhymes and stanzas. Yeah, like a very specific structure. Right. Yeah. Um, but poetic form encompasses so much more. It does. It's not just about the rhymes. Right. It's about how the words are arranged on the page. Okay. The rhythm, oh, the flow. The overall structure. Exactly. All right, so it's I'll like a framework. Yeah, it's like a set of guidelines right. for the poem. That shapes how it's expressed. Exactly. Yeah. Like, think about different architectural styles. Oh, yeah? You know, they all have different forms. Okay. And they create different impressions. Totally. So it's the same with poetry. Okay, so like a sonnet. Yeah. That has 14 lines. Right, very specific rhyme scheme. Right, very structured. Yeah. Um, or a haiku. Oh, yeah. Three lines. Very short. Very short. Specific syllable count. Right. Yeah. Um, so different forms. Create different feelings. They do? Yeah. Like a sonnet might feel very formal. Right very traditional, yeah. whereas a free verse poem Ooh. might feel more- More rooted, free flowing. More experimental. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's fascinating how poetic form really shapes how we experience a poem. I think so. Right. It really does. Um, okay, so let's move on to a collocation that we've seen before, but in a slightly different context, rundle of clothes. Okay. So we talked about bundle yeah. in a more general sense. Right, bundles of things. Yeah, bundles of stuff. Yeah. But now let's focus specifically on clothes. Okay. So a bundle of clothes. Laundry day. Laundry day. Right. Yeah. Overflowing laundry basket. Yeah, or maybe a neatly folded pile. Yeah, ready to be put away. Right. Yeah. But remember, bundle can be so much more it than can. just clothes. Yeah, we talked about bundle of papers. We did. Bundle of sticks. Right. Bundle of joy. Oh. Yeah, so many different things. So many different things. Yeah. Um, so it's all about grouping things together. It is, <laughs> yeah. often for convenience yeah. or practicality. Exactly. Um, okay, so from soft, pliable bundles to something a little bit more rigid. Okay. Let's talk about rigid structure. All right, I'm ready. <sighs> so picture a skyscraper. Okay. With its steel frame. Strong. strong. Unbending. Right. It has to be rigid. It does. To support all that weight. Exactly. Um, or a bridge okay. designed to withstand incredible pressure. 
it can't move. It can't. It has to stay put. It has to stay put. Exactly. Um, so rigid structure. It means no flexibility. No flexibility. Yeah, it's firm. Yeah. And as we've seen before, that can be a good thing. It can. Or a bad thing. Yeah. It depends. It depends, right? Like a rigid system okay. can be good for efficiency. Yeah. Everybody knows what to do. Yeah. But it can also stifle creativity. Yeah. No room for new ideas. Right. Or what about rigid discipline? Oh, yeah. Think about parenting. Right. Some discipline is good. It is. Not too much. Too much is no sun. No, it's not. Right? Kids need to be kids. They do. They need to explore. They do. Yeah. Um, so it's all about finding that balance. I think so. Right. That sweet spot. That sweet spot. Exactly. Um, okay. So for our final collocation in this segment. Okay. Let's revisit a phrase that we talked about before. All right. But I think it's worth repeating. Okay. Terribly sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Good one. Right? Like these two little words. They carry so much weight. That do they convey so much regret and remorse? Yeah, they're more than just a simple sorry. Right. It's like you really messed up. You did. They know it. Yeah. And you feel terrible about it. You feel awful. Yeah. You're taking responsibility. You are. Yeah. Um, and remember, terribly right. can be used for so many different things. It can. Right? Something can be terribly difficult. Yeah. Terribly important. Mm -hmm. Even terribly exciting. Yeah. It just emphasizes. It does. That. It really does. Yeah. Um, so it's a great word to have in your vocabulary. It is. Because it lets you really express the intensity. intensity of your emotion. Of your feelings. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this segment of our deep dive. Yeah, that was fun. I know, right? We've covered a lot of ground. We have. But we've got more collocations coming up. We do. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. Back for more. We are ready to wrap up our collocation journey. I'm excited. Me too. Yeah. We've got some really interesting ones left. We do. So let's jump right back in with turn on the stove. Ooh, back to the kitchen. Back to the kitchen, right. Yeah. So this one, you know, it seems simple enough, but it really evokes so much more than just like the physical act of turning on the stove. Yeah, it's like an invitation. It is. To cook something delicious. Right. It conjures up all those images. It does. They're like sizzling pans. Yeah. Bubbling pots. The smells. The smells. Yeah. The spices. Yeah. The herbs. It's making me hungry. Me too. It's like a sensory experience. It is. Um, and it's the starting point for so many delicious creations. It is. Right. From like a simple weeknight dinner yeah to a fancy feast mm -hmm. like turn on the stove we're about to make something good we are um and what's interesting to me about this one too is like how stoves have evolved oh yeah over time they have right like from wood burning stoves yeah to gas stoves to electric stoves to induction stoves oh yeah so many different kinds and each one reflects like technology your yes, life that we live our lives yeah right um, okay, so let's move on to the world of self-expression with our next collocation, poetic expression. Ooh, a good one. Right, so this one is all about using language in a way that goes beyond the ordinary. Yeah, it's about evoking emotions. <laughs> painting pictures with words. Exactly. Creating a deeper connection. With the world around us. Yeah. Um, so whether it's through poetry or songwriting. You're just everyday conversation. Right. You can use poetic expression. You can. To make it more meaningful. To elevate it. Yeah. And remember when we talked about poetic language i do like using imagery and metaphors yeah. and similes to create those vivid images beautiful images right and poetic imagery mm -hmm. which is all about painting those pictures with words yeah and poetic license Ooh, yeah where you get to bend the rules bend the rules a little bit yeah. get creative yeah um so it's fascinating how poetic expression can really enhance our communication i think so Make it more powerful. More impactful. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on to another collocation that we've seen before, but in a slightly different context. Bundle of clothes. Okay. So we talked about bundles for more general terms. Yeah, bundles of things. Right, bundles of stuff. Yeah. But now we're focusing specifically on clothes. Okay, back to laundry. Back to laundry. Yeah. So bundle of clothes. You know, it might be that overflowing laundry basket. It might be. Right, or that neatly folded stack. Yeah, ready to be put away. Yeah. But remember, bundle can be so much more you can. than just clothes. Yeah. We talked about a bundle of papers. We did. Bundle of sticks. Mm -hmm. Even a bundle of joy. No. Nah. Right? So it's really about grouping things together. Yeah. Creating a collection. Yeah. Often for convenience or practicality. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So from soft, pliable bundles to something a little more rigid. All right. Let's talk about rigid structure. Okay. 
So what comes to mind? I'm picturing a skyscraper. Okay. With a steel frame. Oh, yeah. Strong, unbend. It has to be rigid. It does to hold all that weight. Right, to support all those floors. Yeah. Um, or a bridge. Oh, yeah. Designed to withstand pressure. So much pressure. Incredible pressure. Yeah. It can't budge. It, can, it has to stay put. It has to stay put. Yeah. Um, so rigid structure means no flexibility. No flexibility. It's firm. It's fixed. Yeah. And as we've seen before, that can be a good thing. It can. Or a bad thing. Yeah. It depends. It depends on the context. Yeah. Right? Like a rigid system okay. can be good for efficiency. Right. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody's on the same page. Yeah. But it can also stifle creativity. Yeah. No room for new ideas. Right. What about rigid discipline? Oh, yeah. Like in parenting. Right. Some discipline is good. It is. You need boundaries. You do. But too much. Too much is no fun. No, it's not. Right? It can stifle a child's spirit. Yeah. Um, so it's all about finding that balance. That sweet spot. That sweet spot. Yeah. Okay, so for our final collocation today. Okay. Let's revisit a phrase that we've talked about before. All right. But it's worth repeating. Okay. Terrible sorry. Oh, yeah, good one. Right, these two little words. They carry so much weight. They do. Yeah. They convey so much regret and remorse. More than just a simple sorry. So much more. Yeah. Like you really messed up. Yeah, you did. And you know it. Yeah. And you feel awful. And you're taking responsibility. You are. Yeah. Um, And remember, terribly can be used for so many different things. It can. Right? Something can be terribly difficult. Yeah. Terribly important. Mm -hmm. Even terribly exciting. Right. It just emphasizes. It does. It, it really does. Yeah. Um, so it's a word that allows us to express. Yeah. The intensity of our emotions. The intensity of our emotions. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into the fascinating world of collocations. That was so much fun. I know, right? Yeah. I always learn so much from these conversations. Me too. It's amazing how these little word pairings yeah. have such a big impact on our language. Like on how we communicate. Yeah. Um, so I hope you learned something new today. Me too. I hope you did. And that you'll start paying more attention to these collocations. Yeah. Listen for them. Listen for them. And conversations and books and movies. Yeah, they're everywhere. They are. Once you start noticing them, you can't unnotice them. That's true. Um, so thanks for joining us on this linguistic adventure. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.